This is the S1S podcast, episode 42, with Andrew Ochoa. Stage one startup podcast is launching in T minus five seconds. Three, two, one, zero. Prepare for liftoff. Welcome to the Stage One Startup Podcast for startups and aspiring entrepreneurs to find out what it takes to launch any business idea from Stage One to success. Now, for your hosts, live from the UK, Nichols and Morley. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stage One Startup Podcast. You are tuned in with your hosts, Brad Morley and Greg Nichols. Guys, before we get into this week's episode, we just want to give a quick thank you to our sponsors, Why Not Pro. We are proud to introduce our new sponsors, Why Not Pro. So guys, Why Not Pro provide professional business services to startups and small and medium enterprises. They're a one-stop shop for multiple services. This includes accounting, marketing, mentoring, legal support and so much more so pretty much all of the nitty-gritty bits that take you away from doing the job that you really want to do in the first place why not pro simplify the management of running your business as a single company managing multiple back office services their customers can concentrate on being creative growing their business and doing what they love to do on a daily basis so a few things are the fact that there's no long-term contracts and the costs are fixed at affordable prices. And each client actually gets a dedicated team of experts who focus on helping each business succeed. So guys, for a limited time, we are able to give you as our listeners a 20% discount on all services. All you have to do is mention Stage 1 Startup. Boom, and there we go. You can find out more information about Why Not Pro by going to the show notes within our description to this episode. Now, their web address is also www.whynotpro.com. Links will be in the show notes. Make sure you hit up the links to be able to get your business up and running as quickly as possible at an affordable price and you can also email them if you have any questions at info at whynotpro.com make sure you mention stage one startup on approach and make sure you get your 20 percent discount So then everybody, today is a very special episode because it's going to be a shorter episode because the chap that we've got coming on the show is a very busy guy and he can only fit us in for around 20 minutes or so. So Brad, do you want to just give our listeners a quick intro as to who they're going to be listening to for the next half an hour or so? Of course. So guys, we've got Andrew Ochoa, who's the CEO of Waverly Labs. Uh, Waverly Labs is an innovative consumer electronics company that was created back in 2014. Um, and it's basically at the convergence of wearable technology and speech translation. So they create products for and around the user. They work on technologies that transform lives and impact on a global scale by developing breakthrough solutions that revolutionize the status quo, which is why we've got him on the show today. Um, the company have already been featured in the likes of Business Insider, Forbes, HuffPost, Mashable, The Verge, many more. Um, they've developed basically the world's first smart earpiece, language translator which is called the pilot uh, so today we're lucky enough to be joined by andrew for a special episode to talk about exactly what the pilot is what we can expect in 2017 the purpose behind the pilot and how it's going to change our future and provide the likes of travelers the ability to connect and speak with others around the world without language barriers um, plus we're going to be getting to know more about Andrew's life as an entrepreneur and what really goes into the process of creating a new world innovative product such as this incredible invention. So are you ready Greg? Should we dive into the show and find out about all about Pilot? Hell yeah man, I'm absolutely buzzing. The little nerdy side of me is coming out <laughs> on this one. This is an incredible product guys, let's get into the show. Okay so Andrew, thank you for coming on the show buddy, how are you today? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for inviting me. Good, good. And can you just tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself before we get into the questions today? Yeah, so I'm the uh, the original founder and CEO of Waverly Labs. Um, we are a tech startup here in Brooklyn, New York, working on a really cool product called Pilot. It is a translating earpiece. Um, the whole idea is if you and I are speaking different languages, um, we can both each have our own pilot earpiece, uh, very simply set the language 
languages that we're speaking and listening to via our mobile app, uh, and just simply be able to have a conversation without language barriers. It's really cool, really exciting to be working on a project like this. Um, and uh, we've had just really incredible uh, interest and press from uh, all, all over the world, really. It's incredible. It really is. And I mean, it's changing the world in the way that we communicate with other people. It just completely breaks down that language barrier, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It's, we, when we started this, we wanted to do something that was, you know, that was going to solve a, a global challenge. And as we were thinking about the use cases for the pilot ear piece, we thought, I mean, what, what better, what greater problem could we try to solve than, than the problem of language? Mm, totally perfect. Uh, it's, it's definitely gonna gonna change a lot of uh, issues for pre- people and bridge that gap. So, Andrew, um, Waverly Labs. Am I right in thinking it's uh, you know the, the the whole company as a whole is doing lots of different startups, or is it just Pilot? Currently, we're just focused on Pilot. Yeah, this is definitely our first product line that we're uh, that we're working on. Now, down the road, let's say three years, five years out, let's see what we end up putting our hands into yeah um and we think of us we think of ourselves as an innovative uh consumer products company first and foremost right yeah so we definitely want to be tackling real world global problems pilot is just our first product that we're working on awesome so what what actually spurred the idea of creating pilot for you was there kind of a reason behind it yeah i mean this the genesis happened of this idea was over three years ago um my original co-founder jane and myself we were working on the idea you know we were really inspired by wearable technology and we were working on the idea of a smart earpiece now that at the time back then we were a really small team but we the four of us we came from different backgrounds we spoke different languages and that was that was kind of how the idea for pilot was born um we wanted to solve a global challenge with, with the pilot earpiece and we realized language itself because, again, we came from different backgrounds, we spoke different languages, we realized language would be the greatest thing we could try to solve. Perfect. Yeah. And obviously, we, we came across you guys through your Indiegogo campaign, which kind of just completely caught our eye because we just, as soon as we kind of saw it, we was like, look, these guys are absolutely amazing. But one, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to talk to you about was kind of how you raised funding from that. So am I right in thinking you've raised over 3.5 million in crowdfunding through Indiegogo? Well, actually... To date, we've raised close to 4.5 million uh, US dollars uh, on Indiegogo. Wow! Um, How does that feel, it, man? Yeah, it's a, it's great. I think we're it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling. I mean, I, I can't even I can't even express. We, I think, currently we're maybe the third most funded tech campaign on Indiegogo. So we've definitely broken some records here and there uh, along the way, and uh, it's just it's incredible. It's it's been really exciting. The Indiegogo community, uh, the Indiegogo team. And everyone that we work with here at New Lab in Brooklyn has been really uh, excited and pumped uh, for us. So how have you guys kind of managed the campaign? Like, how did it kind of grow to where it is today? Obviously, other than the fact that it's a brilliant product, like, there must have been a process that you guys went through to be able to kind of get the notice that needed to be out there. Yeah, I mean, we started this with a, with a very thorough outline. I mean, we're talking six months out before the campaign even launched. And... Um, I'm working on an article to define this, uh, to kind of help other entrepreneurs and, and other teams out there working, planning a crowdfunding campaign, which I'll go into more in depth in, in the near future. But uh, just to kind of break it down really quickly, there were three main components to the entire campaign, the pre-campaign, the campaign itself, and then the post-campaign. And we planned this all out six months in advance. As I said, um, the pre-campaign was focused on telling a really really interesting story that was going to grab the attention of, of everyone, right? Um, we had a higher director that could help us refine that story, make it super simple, incredibly simple uh, for the average person to understand what we were working on, what we were doing, um, pu- uh, putting together a way to build a community. Um, and we're talking, you know, social media engagement, uh, email uh, email uh, forms, email capture forms for, for the community to sign up on our website, things like that. Um, and this is all happening before the, pe- the campaign. You use some of that content that was created to to tease the audience 
which we did with a teaser video about two weeks before the campaign launched. And I'd recommend much more than two weeks. Um, but it was that teaser video which got picked up by the press and was uh, um, was distributed through, I mean, most major uh, media outlets um, globally. And that was def- that definitely spurred a lot of interest. Um, and you want to have a, a nice established community before you go into your crowdfunding campaign because people think, you know, you put something on Kickstarter, you put something on Indiegogo, all of a sudden it's just going to do well. That's not the case at all. You have to bring your own community. So there's a lot of planning that has to happen beforehand um, during the pre-campaign. And then during the campaign, you have to manage it. And then post-campaign, um, it's really helpful if you bring if you have someone in-house that can um, manage your marketing and press and, and just your strategy moving forward. And we had someone on our, on our team, uh, Marion, who does a really good job at that, uh, at, at keeping it alive and, and keeping the numbers um, going and keeping the community engaged. That's perfect. That's, that's great, awesome. great tips there for anybody that's listening that I think that is thinking about kind of going down the crowdfunding route because obviously it's not just as simple as kind of you know setting up a campaign on Kickstarter or Indiegogo mm. and it becoming hugely successful. So thank you for kind of walking us through the process there. Definitely. So Andrew, um, talk us through because a, a big kind of topic that we that we focus on and that we hear from our guests on this uh, on this podcast is about validating a business idea now. When you first obviously was going through the motions, you guys have built up uh, a lot of you know traction. You said you took six months in the beginning to get things up and running officially before we, like planning it out. Um, you've then you're obviously built up uh, an astonishing amount of uh, of backers and and crowdfunding. So talk us through how kind of validation went for you. Was it because this is the kind of thing where in my eyes, if someone was to say you know um, this is the product would you buy it i'm i'm just thinking does this even need validation because this is breaking barriers like seriously but did you guys go through a kind of vetting process of validating this idea first yeah so i mean look we knew we were working on something really interesting right uh it's, this is kind of the dream the stuff of science fiction so we knew it was really interesting and we had some some validation from people that we talked to um within our small team within our small community the whole idea of crowdfunding, though, isn't just about raising money. I mean, it's powerful for that. That's absolutely sure. But crowdfunding can be used for a lot of purposes. One, um, raising money. Two, testing um, what we would call price sensitivity, knowing what the community, what the market would pay for a product like some like this. It's, it's some of that as well. It's a little bit of business strategy there. Um, another thing right there, as you just mentioned, Bradley, is, is validation. And we're talking about a product market, finding our product market fit. So, yeah, we knew it was not something really interesting. People were really excited when we were early stage. Um, but the community, the indie global community or crowdfunding community in general was partially, um, partially helped us with that, with that validation and, and finding what we would call a product market fit, um, basically meaning this is what we're working on, but how will people really use it? What are those, are those use cases? Are they going to use it for language learning? Are they going to use it for traveling? Are they going to use it to speak with family and friends? You'd be surprised, as a matter of fact, how many people send us emails saying, this is going to help me communicate with my in-laws. Um, yeah, mm, yeah language. I can imagine. And so, uh, in one regard, to answer your question, yes, this has definitely helped us with our validation, even though we knew we had something beforehand. But even larger than that it really helps us to find those specific use cases that how people envision using using the pilot perfect so can you just kind of talk to us through the technical side of the product so obviously i'm assuming you guys must have to go through quite a lot of programming um uh, i'm assuming translation software I know you guys are built. You guys are launching with an iOS app first, aren't you? Yeah. So we launched. Um, uh, we wanted to launch early versions of the of the software via Android and iOS, which we launched uh, over the past six weeks, essentially, um, on both platforms, Android and, and iOS. Um, the whole purpose of that was really just to kind of get it out there in the community, let people play with it, see if there are any bugs. To be quite honest, um, make sure that it's, it's nice and refined. And also just educate people uh, um, with how speech translation works. A lot of people don't know how it works, right? So um, yeah. we wanted to use it. We wanted to use it as a way of educating our community, letting them play with it. As I mentioned, um, testing it, um, 
the system is designed to learn as it, the more people use it, the better it gets, right? So that also played a fact. Putting it out there earlier um, before the actual pilot earpieces are, are delivered helps helps that um, helps the machine learning um, refine the, the the translation engine itself. So there are a lot of reasons why we launched it via via uh, via an app over the past uh, six weeks before the actual full conversational kit with the pilot earpieces is, is, is delivered later this spring. So how many languages can this can can it kind of cope for? So right now we're focused on five main languages: um, French, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, along with English. Perfect. Uh, really, it's designed for the European market. We wanted to really target um, uh, Latin languages for that reason: uh, U.S., European, North American relations. However, you want to define it. Um, that's our main focus currently. In the future, let's say fall 2017, winter 2017. We'll start for focusing on, on greater expansion, uh, more languages. Uh, we're talking, you know, Russian, um, East, Southeast Asian, Middle Eastern, Arabic, Hebrew, uh, maybe even African and Indian languages, etc. That's awesome. So, could you just briefly tell us, like, for any of our listeners, how the pilot kit will work? So, talk, like, talk us through as if, like, we're a user of the product. I've just met somebody that's of a different language. I wanted to use the kit. What, what it, how, do, how does it work? Yeah, so it's real simple, um, and actually the pilot earpiece, uh, the pilot conversational kit comes with two earpieces specifically to make it very simple to use. Okay. So let's say you and I meet Bradley, let's say you and I, Bradley, we meet, and um, you don't speak my language, I don't speak your language. Quite simply, I, I put one of the earpieces in my ear and I give you the other one, um, and all we do is set, set the languages which we're speaking via the mobile app. The earpieces just simply translate back and forth for us. That's awesome. Okay, so so that's brilliant. And then they've obviously got the app as well. I mean, with the app, I'm all, I'm also interested to know: will the app intertwine with like tech texting and iOS and things like that? So, like, if someone was to text, I'm just I'm just trying to think of some ideas that are going to come off the back of this. I'm interested to find out, like, with the app, how it's going to work for people. Well, the uh, the current app that's out there now um, is again, it's an early version. It's designed to work. Uh, in a few different cases, you, one, you could text, right? You could text within the app and it'll, it'll show you the translation. Two, you could speak directly into the app and it'll speak back to you what the translation is. Depending on how you wanted it, it offers both features, text and speech, um, dependent on the language as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the full conversational kit, which delivers in May with the public piece, uh, that's designed specifically to work um, kind of in this group capacity or this crowd capacity where you and I are speaking to each other and the earpieces are are just translating um, back and forth to us with with the with the mobile app. Cool. Awesome. Um, sorry, back on. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, this kind of technology, it's like seriously changing the way that you know the world interacts with people on a daily basis. I know you guys are passionate about what you're doing. And I know you guys see a vision, but do you kind of see bigger companies coming in and kind of swooping your technology and maybe even buying you out? Would that ever be kind of what you would kind of go down? Would you ever see that route for, for Waverly Labs and Pilot? Uh, well, I don't like to speculate that far ahead in the, in the future. Um, we're not really focused on, um, I mean, look, if, if somebody threw us enough money, sure, we'd, we'd be interested in, <laughs> in pursuing those kinds of opportunities. Right? Yeah, Let's totally. just be honest, for a startup, for a tech startup, yes. We'd be, we'd be open, very open to talking about, talking uh, having those kinds of conversations with with other large companies, um, but but uh, we're started we're a startup that's really really dedicated to what we're doing here. That's that's the, the product innovation of of what Pilot is achieving, um, breaking down language barriers. I mean, everyone on the team essentially speaks multiple languages. They come from a background where they've studied or worked on and researched speech translation, whether it's on the software side. Um, uh, or, or on their operations side, they, they have backgrounds in working in, in, on linguistic projects. On the hardware side, they've worked on wearable technology, really inspired by that. So, okay, look, if somebody came to us and, and, they, and they were curious what we were, to know what we were doing and working on, we'd be open to having those kinds of partnership talks. But even if it's just us, we're so dedicated to Pilot that we're happy. Love that, man. That's really brilliant. Awesome. Thank you for answering that one. I was just really curious because, like, you know, this well, there's te- going to be like te- and things yeah, like that. I'm sure exactly. Be, like, These te- this technology is like, you know, groundbreaking. You know, and it's it's powerful to know that you guys are out there 
you know, making your mark on it and really changing the way, like I've said before, communicating and breaking down that barrier. It's, you know, it's life changing for so many people. It's going to influence a lot of companies, I think, to, to they're going to invest a lot of interest in this and, and probably, you know, try and make their own version, I'd imagine. Um, so, Andrew, um, what advice could you give to a startup right now that's looking to build a tech innovative product or on, on that's on a similar scale to this? Like, what, what things have you gone through that you might be able to pass on some helpful advice to anyone else that goes through the same? Yeah, I would say there's a couple main things. If you want to, if there's an entrepreneur out there looking to build his own tech startup, the first thing is whatever you're working on, make sure that you're solving a real problem. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, make sure that you're doing something that that that, that has that's going to solve a real problem. Don't build the next widget just because it's it's new and exciting. Um, like uh, I can't, I can't, I don't want to give an analogy currently, but just make sure that whatever you're working on, whether it's wearable tech or or, or hardware device or software. Um, uh, software platform, make sure it provides value to the community and it solves a real problem. The second is to make sure that you have a really strong team working with you. Because you can't do it yourself, and even two people, it's really hard. Mm. Um, but, but make sure you have a really strong team. We have, you know, our team is small. We're like nine, ten people. Um, we follow lean methodology. We, we keep costs low. We focus on, on innovating. We focus on the product. But it's such an intricate product that it requires so much engineering brain power and that's why 80 percent of our team is are engineers to some degree masters phd whatever the case is um so solve a real problem that adds value to the community and make sure you've got a really strong team working with you perfect and lastly the final question after pilot are there any kind of other game changing innovative ideas that waverly labs will be working on like what else is going on in the background for you guys <laughs> well i mean look pilot is pretty intense project unto itself. <laughs> yeah, I can we, imagine. We have, crazy, imagine. <laughs> we have crazy ideas. We're dreamers. We want to work on really cool, innovative innovative technology. And like I said earlier, we, we do consider ourselves an innovative consumer products company. So down the road, we, there are things that we definitely want to work on next. Um, and I don't, uh, who knows what they'll be, right? Who knows what they'll be? Um, we have ideas. But like I said, we're curious. We're, we're dreamers. We want, to, we want to focus. We want to work on crazy things. Um, for now, let's just make sure we get pilot right. Definitely. So when when is uh, when is pilot officially launching, Andrew? Yeah. So like I mentioned, uh, we currently have the two apps out on iOS and Android. Pilot yep. Translator. Um, we'll be iterating on those over the next uh, couple of months, making them more robust, making them uh, improving the translation, the accuracy, reducing the latency, those kinds of things. We're moving actually um, from Indiegogo to our own website in a few days. Um, at which point the price will change. So, um, uh, uh, so um, as we move to our own e-commerce platform on our own website, um, the Indiegogo backers that have currently already pre-ordered will will get will be part of the first container, which is um, on schedule to ship by in, in May. Perfect. Awesome. And for anybody that listen, that's listening right now, Andrew, where can we find? out more about Waverly Labs and Pilot? Where can we direct our listeners to you guys? Oh, the, the best way to, to find out more information about the company is just go to our website, waverlylabs.com. That's Waverly with one E. Perfect. And obviously, as always, we'll be sure to link those within the show notes for this week's episode, which will be on our website and in the description to this podcast. So... Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We really do appreciate it. You guys are absolutely killing it. We're behind the vision. We can see where you guys are going with it, and it's you know it's life changing. And yeah, it's just through the roof, man. Huge hats off to you. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure talking with you guys. I, I really appreciate that. Appreciate it, Andrew. Catch you soon, mate. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, guys. So there we have it. I feel like I've just stepped into 2050. Oh my God, that is such a <laughs> step into the future, that type of technology, man. It's just changing the world. I can't wait to get one of these things. No, I mean either, man. I can't I can't wait either. I think of all the girls we could pick up, or I could pick up. <laughs> you <so>. can. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, though, like, I know we're already a lazy... Uh, we're already a lazy country as it is. English people don't tend to learn other languages, but this is just this is just bridging that gap completely. It is, man. It is totally because it's kind of like one of those things that you know you can kind of see companies like Google creating, but then you've got you know mm. Pilot 
coming out with Waverly Labs and you know they're just going to absolutely smash it I can already tell yeah no I mean the funding side of things is just incredible and I think it'd be good to get um, getting back on the show at some point to talk about the crowdfunding side of it and what really goes into making a successful crowdfunding campaign yeah campaign. totally man and also just kind of seeing where they are in the in the future just yeah. seeing what they're, what they're up to and how far they're taking it definitely well guys thanks very much for listening we hope you enjoyed that um, if you want to find out more about them, obviously you know where to go. Um, but that, that's it for today's episode. Obviously, it was a bit of a shorter one, but hopefully that was a bit easier for some of you that may be on your way to doing something or you know, you're know you not got much time on your hands. Perfect. And if you did like that episode, remember, guys, you can rate and review this show. We'd really appreciate it. It helps us out massively. So if you liked it, go ahead and do that. Cheers, guys. Catch you next week. Thank you for listening to the Stage One Startup Podcast. If you're looking to launch your own business idea, visit stageonestartup.com for recommended resources and step-by-step guidance to help you succeed. Prepare for takeoff.